In heavenly armor we'll enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory. church said? Amen. amen and amen. We have a, several Bibles to give out today. In fact, the past six weeks or so, we've had about 14, maybe 15 baptisms. So let's give the Lord a praise for that. God is good. Jason, Jason, will you come up here, please? Very good. You got a Bible there. I have one also for Champ, brother. They were baptized at camp a, a little bit ago, and I'm not sure of the exact dates. This is Champ's. This is yours. I'm going to get Lucas up here as well. Lucas, if you'll come up. You'll stay up right here. Yeah, there you go. Your sweetheart. Lucas, here you go. And Arnell. Come on up here, Arnell. You come right over here, sweetheart. Very good. And the reason why I stood up here is because you're so tall. You know that, right? All right, there you go, Arnell. It's right over there somewhere. We're going to get a picture of you right over here next to this young lady. All right. We're going to get a picture. God is an awesome God. Amen. Yeah. It is a wonderful thing to see. It's a wonderful thing to be a part of seeing lives being touched by God. We even had several more even at camp this past week. I know Michelle White baptized some people there. Uh, Alex was baptized. We're going to get his Bible certificate there. And if I missed anyone from that, we're going to, uh, Jocelyn, I think, was baptized as well. And uh, so we're going to get that announced as well as we go through that. They've already left, but we're going to have a prayer over them. I think they're a little shy. Let's have a prayer over them. Father God, thank you for the Holy Spirit that moves within the hearts of people, young people especially, Father. Thank you for that. That's so refreshing in our spirits in a world that is trying to teach everything but the truth. They're receiving the truth of God's message that Jesus died for them. And if their faith is in them, Father, they can have an eternal life. Thank you for that promise. Raise them up to be mighty in your kingdom. May your movement even be stronger among us. And if there's anyone here, Father, that has never received you as Lord and Savior, anyone here that's never experienced the new birth, Father, may you prick their heart today. May this be their day that they receive the gift of eternal life, the assurance of heaven, Father. You want no one to miss. That's why you sent your Son, for only his blood could cleanse us. And when we put our faith and trust in him, we receive that forgiveness. I thank you. We praise you. Let it be forevermore be praised in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us all stand as we sing some more. Lord, we come before thee now. At thy feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our 
The Bible mentions food 1,207 times in its 66 books. On its own, without any context, that number doesn't really mean a whole lot. But when you consider that the word love is only mentioned 645 times, heaven is mentioned 622 times, repent 75, and baptism 22 times, it starts to seem like 1,207 mentions should catch our eye. Meals are the keystone for a lot of important events in the Bible. We could all name several. The Passover, Jacob's story, manna and quail, Jesus' first miracle at the wedding, right? Five loaves and two fishes, the last meal, just to name a few. One of our family friends wrote a book called Nourish, a God who loves to feed us. And in that book, his main point is that Jesus' ministry was centered around feeding people and discussing real food. And what is real food during these meals? By using food to reach people, Jesus was simply following the precedent set by his Father, a God who loves to feed us. As we come to the table today, let us remember that we serve a God who does indeed love to feed us, to take care of us. And may it also be a reminder that we are called by taking this communion to do the same for others. In John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It's because of his sacrifice that we gather around to be nourished today. Let's pray for the bread. Father, as we come to you today, may this bread that we break be a reminder of the sacrifice that you made for us, and may it give us the same energy and desire to do the same for others. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As we continue in our remembrance of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, let's pray for the cup. Father, help us to remember that the blood that was spilled on our behalf was shared to wash us clean of our sins. And as we appreciate and take in that blessing, help it to motivate us to forgive others as you have forgiven us. We're grateful for your sacrifice and the blood that was shared on our behalf. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. At this time, we'd like to take a moment to be grateful for the financial gifts that God has given to each and every one of us and consider using them to further benefit his kingdom through the work here at Western Hills. There's several ways you can contribute to the ministries that we have here. One is in the foyer on that table in the front, and the other would be online. Um, let's go to God and, and be grateful and, and pray that we would be good stewards of these gifts given to this congregation. Let's pray. 
Father, may you multiply the blessings given to us as you multiplied the loaves and the fishes. May Western Hills and its leaders be good stewards of the financial gifts that you have given to us, and may we be in constant remembrance of the fact that those gifts are from you, uh, and they all should return to you in some way, whether that's through the gifts of love and service that we have, or if it's financial. Help us to be motivated to continue to do your good work, um, both in this church and outside of its walls. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. Jesus. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. You're perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Lead us with your mighty hand. Lead us with your mighty hand. We will conquer in your name. We will conquer in your name. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. And proclaim that Jesus reigns. Hail, hail, line of Judah. Hail, hail, line of Judah. How powerful you are. How powerful you are. Lord God, strong and mighty. Lord God, strong and mighty. How wonderful you are. You are. How wonderful you are. Oh, how wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. Oh, how wonderful you are. How wonderful you are. How wonderful. Church said? Amen. 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 Once again. 
Again, if you're visiting with us today, thank you so much for coming. We have a lot of people on vacation. Don and I are leaving in about three minutes, so this is going to be a really short <laughs> service. <clears throat> you heard of the one of the preacher that was uh, asked to come and speak, and he, um, he was delighted to do so. And, you know, usually they give you an honorarium or something, something, a token of some type, something. And he was excited about that as well, for he needed it. Well, the deacon came up, the finances came up to him just before the service started and simply said, well, here's the deal. We don't have a lot of money, but we're going to give you $100. He said, well, that's really good. I, I think that'll be great. And um, they said, well, the, 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 the deal is, though, we're going to take back a dollar for every word you say. <laughs> he was like, man, I really need the money, but I got to preach the word. He thought for a moment, and he got up, and he said, Turn or burn, <laughs> he left. <laughs> 97 bucks is pretty good. All right, God is good, amen? We've been on this journey of, um, at the well, the well of, and then we fill in the blanks. We talked about encouragement together, and we're going to, we've talked about this forgiving and how the importance of those things are in our lives, of not only how we receive them from God, but how we give them out to people. And I want to continue along those lines of this series of messages, and I'll do that when I get back. Zach's going to be speaking for me while I'm gone. Kent's going to come in and do some speaking as well and appreciate each of them in advance. But I want to talk to you today about the well of blessings in, in our lives. And, and everybody you meet wants blessings. It doesn't matter if you're young or old. We like blessings. And especially we like blessings from God. Give me an amen. amen. Well, there's a way to receive those. And God gives us information how we receive those from him. And, and, and it comes to this servant's heart. And I want to talk about that today as well. In an early century, there lay a large boulder in the middle of a, of a road that people traveled. And traveler after traveler went by viewing this, and they would veer off the road, and they would shake their head, and they would complain about, someone needs to do something about this boulder in the middle of the road. But no one did. Finally, one day, a man came along, and seeing the boulder in the middle of the road, he got a large branch from a tree and began to pry the boulder. It took him a while, but he eventually was able to roll that boulder off the side of the road. And there underneath that boulder was a note. It was a bag and there was a note attached to that. He, began, he picked the note up, of course, and he began to read it. It said simply this, Thank you for being a true servant of the kingdom. Many have passed this way over the years and complained because of the state of the problem. But no one, no one seemed to do anything about it. But you have. You've taken the responsibility upon yourself to serve the kingdom. And we thank you. You are the type of citizen we need more of in the kingdom. Please accept this bag of gold that traveler after traveler had walked simply by because they didn't care enough to serve in the kingdom. I wonder in my own life how many bags of gold, if you will, that I have passed by because of my unwilling heart to serve like God has called me to serve. I like to mention the ones that I have, and I can recall those very quickly. But I'm also reminded sometimes of the ones that I'm sure that I've missed, and it causes me to think. So I wonder oftentimes, are we the type of heavenly citizens that the Father needs more of? Are we just in the kingdom, or do we serve in the kingdom of God? That's a question for us all. Now, I don't know about you, of course, but I do often find myself as that human nature kicks in. Because I am human, but I am spiritual because I've been introduced to Christ and experienced the new birth and I've put him on in baptism. And I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I'm spiritual, but I'm also human. And God understands that, but we often struggle with that, being the servant that God has called us to be. So it questions, and we question that. After this past week, I would say, this week's journey with one of my dearest friends in life. And watching his servant heart go through a five and a half, six hour surgery to donate a kidney so that a beautiful 25 year old young lady would have the opportunity to live a normal life. It was very humbling. And what a beautiful expression of a servant's heart, a servant to the Lord. I would ask that you continue to pray for those 
that were involved in that. They're doing great. And I'm so thankful. But we, we don't, as humans, we still have this struggle, do we not? Even the disciples themselves that Jesus, if you will, handpicked, had struggles with this human side constantly in their walk with Jesus. Jesus saw it time and time again, but he didn't give up on them. So that gives me hope that when I fail, he doesn't give up on me. Give me an amen. amen. God doesn't say, I'm keeping score. You failed three times this week, you're out. But he does look at my heart. Just like he looked at David's heart and he knew David's heart, he knows your heart too, my friend. Please know that. We want position, we want power, we want things of life, maybe a combination of all of those things. Maybe perhaps as we get a little older, we release more and more and more of that. Hopefully that is the case. We understand that young people are different than us old people like me. But we were once young, believe it or not, young people. And so we struggle with that still. We want those things. Why don't you look at Mark chapter 10 today. It will be our study, if you will, for just a few moments. Here's the struggle and the disciples have. There's 12 of them, of course, we know them. And here's two of them. This is uh, James and John. They're, they're, they're brothers, and they, they come to the teacher, Jesus himself. You can read the scripture, of course. They said, what we, what we want you to do something for us, but we want you to do whatever we ask of you. Now, now notice the question, that they're, they're, how they, they introduce it. Lord, we know who you are, and what we want you to do is what we ask of you. Do you ever do that to the Lord? We just ask the Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me. If you, Lord, I'm really right here. Give me the, Lord, I need, and we just fill in the blanks, don't we? We're no different than they are, and we're children of God as well. We want you to do for us whatever we ask. Whatever we ask, as though he's a genie in a bottle. And sometimes we get caught in that, and I know I have in the past. And Jesus comes back, and he simply he doesn't, he's just Jesus. He says, what do you want from me? Well, they don't hesitate. It, is, it appears as they don't hesitate. Well, the truth is, let one of us sit on the right and one on the other on the left in your glory. That's not asking too much now, is it, Jesus. Now, mind you, the other ten are listening, or they're somewhere nearby, or at least they get the word in a moment. But mind you that these are the disciples of God, and, and it sounds as though they are saying, to me when I read that, it sounds as though they are actually saying something along these lines. They're saying, we don't mind hanging around you. We, we don't even mind cleaning up the mess. We don't mind picking up the baskets full. We don't mind seeing your miracles performed. We don't mind that in the long journeys and the long days and the long nights or whatever. We don't really mind all of that. We don't mind doing our part. But what we do want is we want something for it. I find that fascinating. We want rewarded for it. Listen to his reply that Jesus gives and see if you cannot discover the way to the well of blessings in your own life. Because you say, that was them, that's not me, I would never do that, but I find myself doing that nonetheless. But I, I, good for them, they're going to find something, but what about me? Because I'm here, it's me, it's now. It's my time, it's 66. Jesus comes back and simply says, you don't know what you're asking. You, you really don't know what you're asking. And then, then he, he says these words, can, can you drink the cup that I drink and baptize the baptism that I have baptized with? Oh, we can. There's no hesitation. Oh, yes, you bet. Oh, yes, you will. You will drink the cup and you will be baptized. But to sit on the right and the left, not, it's not for me to say. In other words, God's already held that out. He's already prepared that for someone else. Oh, Really? Oh, the disappointment that must have come in that. Man, the request that I wanted from God, I didn't get. You ever been there? You ever been there when God said no? You know how you walk in the will of God? A good friend of mine told me this a long time ago. I've never forgotten it. Because we want to walk in the will of God. Do you want to walk in the will of God? Give me an amen. amen. That's pretty weak. Because when you walk in the will of God, sometimes God says no. 
if you, if you want to know how you're walking in the will of God and you know that you're walking in the will of God, you accept his no's as though they were yeses because everything God does for you is correct. Amen. Everything. So his no's must be right, even though I don't like them very much. You ever get a no from God? Did you say, why not me? Why didn't I get that raise? Why didn't I get that healing? Why didn't my mom live through the cancer? Why didn't this happen? Why didn't that happen? I should have had, I can, what? Did anybody but me? Sure, we have. Here's an interesting part of the story is it takes a little bit of a turn when the ten heard about this. The ten were real happy for, for, for James and John. They were real thrilled. Oh, we're so happy for you. But we're even happier that you didn't get what you wanted. <laughs> Maybe not. Watch what they do. It says here in the word, it says they became indignant. They, that's a little jealousy set in there. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Who are you guys? We picked up more fish than you picked up. I mean, we were there when, he, when he, the, 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 the fig tree withered. We were right there when we, we saw the water turn into wine that Zach talked about. Hey, we know that. Who are you to ask him that? It should be us. And now there's this within... The 12. You see, that can come in to anybody. It comes into your family, doesn't it? You ever have disagreements in your family? Or is your family perfect? <laughs> Will the perfect family please stand up? <laughs> I don't see anybody standing up except for me, and voila. <laughs> All right, let's see what these guys have to say here. That's all they say, actually. Jesus comes back and he does something that's remarkable. He calls them together. He doesn't beat them up with words. He doesn't run off mad. Doesn't take them off their Facebook list or whatever that stuff that you guys do that I know nothing of. He calls them together and he says, You know, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. Yes, we do. You bet we do. We've been part of that. We know that, people. I can just see them in their minds because they're thinking something. And their high officials exercise authority over them. Yes, we see that. Not so with you. Oh, no, never with us. And that's exactly what they were doing. They were judging or they were questioning or they were wanting, just like the leaders were. Oh. Did you ever find what you were trying to do for someone else or correct someone else? You found out later on that actually you were the one doing it in reverse? Anybody but me. That makes you feel really big, doesn't it? That'll stunt your growth real quick. Unless you realize it and make the correction. And you make the correction, you can move on and be refreshed, as we talked about last week. So he goes on to say, it's not with you. Not so with you. Oh, thank you. He's not going to scold us. But let me tell you how you get to the top. Let me, how you, let me show you how you get that seat. Let me tell you how you rise to the top. And then he goes on to say, you must be a servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. I can only imagine what went through their mind. We've been with you for three years, and now you want us to continue to serve? Come on. And then he gets to the heart of the matter. Because that's what Jesus always wants to get to with you and me. See, he tells it like it is, and then he says, now wait a minute. I'm not asking you to do one more thing than what I've already done and will continue to do. And he says, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We like that last verse because we find our redemption in it. Give me an amen. amen. I like that part. He's serving us. He served us well, of course, for us. Even though we did not deserve it, He served us. And when we took communion today, we are to remember what He did. That's only the command that He gives. As oft as you come together, do this in remembrance of what I've done for you. How I served you. That's pretty awesome. That's his request. So as we're taking this, we're remembering, yes, I'm like Jesus in the sense that I've been buried with him in baptism. Yes, 
I've been buried. I've been raised. But my Jesus went to a cross and died for me. And because of his precious blood, I am saved by the blood of the Lamb. Give me an amen. amen. Now, Jesus is saying the blessings in your life come by following my example. Oh, okay. The well of God's blessing is deep and wide. I love that. It's deep and wide to enjoy them. One must be willing to dive in with a Christ-like heart, Christ-like attitude of a servant to discover them. And there is where we struggle. We struggle with diving in with a Christ-like attitude on all occasions. I can name the ones that I've... Boy, I was really Christ-like when I did that. But the ones that I failed, I liked to forget. And I wish he wouldn't bring them up sometimes. And he doesn't bring them up to say, I hold it against you. He brings it up to remind me that he has forgiven me, but also to remind me or ask me, have you learned anything? You see, you young, young folks that have these young children, and we're so thankful, the ones that pile out of here every Sunday, which is wonderful. You're teaching your, chil your children, and young people, your parents have tried to teach you, and they're trying to work through the disciplines that you need in your life, we all need in our life, because the Lord disciplines those he loves. But, but actually what we're trying to do through that process is did you learn anything? What did you learn from this? Not, I'm sorry. What did you learn from this? Oh, I can't put those pictures online because I can never get them back. Oh. I can't go out partying with my friends because even if I don't drink and they do and if I'm with, oh, oh, oh. See how it works? What did you learn from that? That's what we need to try to teach, and that's what we do is we try to teach. Because we all fail. Any, anybody in here but me as a teenager fail? Go ahead and raise your hand up. Some of you got to be waving like this, man. Right? For through the lens of a servant, you even serve your children when you serve them well through discipline. To not discipline is not correct. It's not biblical. To discipline is biblical, but you must do it with a servant's heart because that is the child that God has given you the responsibility to teach the Word of God to. Once again, for through the lens of a servant is how one discovers the fullness of God's richest blessings. It's the well of blessings. Of course, Jesus will always, again, He will always lead the way in what He commands us to do. And He leads this example... There in Mark 10, 45, as you see there on the screen once again. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Zig Ziglar said it this way. He said, you'll always have everything you want in life if you help enough other people to get what they want in life. In other words, your vision looks through a different lens. You're looking through a different lens to be able to be a servant. You know, I, I, my family, we grew up poor, and a lot of you in this family, I mean, this church family, you know that, and you grew up poor. Or what you would say was poor in our country is still rich. We didn't know it. We had plenty of food. We had hand-me-downs from cousins, and riches were too long. Mine are still long, too long today. But, but we had the hand-me-downs. We, we always had food. And my mom always said, there's two things we'll always do, is we will be clean and we will share with others what we have. And what she was trying to impart there was just to be a servant. Just to be a servant to other people. A Christian is called to serve. And serving is where you find the well of blessings. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul tells us, I would encourage you to read it. It's hard not to filter it through your life if you read it correctly. Paul tells us what we shouldn't be doing and what we should be doing. He tells us what we shouldn't be doing. There's consequences to those things that we do that are not godly. But he begins that portion and he tells us what we should do and what we should be like. And there as you read it on the screen, it says that we are to be imitators of Christ. Imitators of God. In the imitators of Christ and the examples that he's left us. And so if we are to be Christ-like, 
then we must become servants of those in which he served. People. And there's my problem. Anybody? Marvin Phillips used to say these words, bless his heart. He would say, you know, church would be awesome if it wasn't for all the people. And then he would always finish it by saying, I are one. Because there's where we fall out, isn't it? Now, being a servant is not always easy. It doesn't naturally come to many. Some, it just seems to be ooze out of them. You ever see that? And it's beautiful. But normally, it's not something that we naturally want to do. It doesn't come easy, as I said. But if you do what God says, you will see the reward at the end of that or at some point. When, when you give a hug, you get a hug normally, right? I'm a hugger. I like to hug. I like hugs. And so I give hugs. And I leave here every Sunday and I get a lot of hugs. And I'm thankful for that. So what you give out, once again, remember, what you give out, you get in return. We studied that the last two weeks together. For any Christ-like characteristic, this is important, any Christ-like characteristic that you and I pour out of display or portray in our lives, blessings will flow because Christ is honored when we display Him to the world to see. Blessings stop in your life when you don't display Christ. Scripture says those who are last shall be first. That's either true or false. And my Jesus said it, and it's true. Always. The world says it makes no sense. The world right now that we're living in makes no sense. But the truth of God's word tells us to serve those that make no sense. And I'm like, that makes no sense. <laughs> but it does because my Lord said it and I have to deal with it. God says, try it and find out. Just try serving and find out. This one woke me up Tuesday morning. Most of my messages wake me up early in the morning. I don't know why. But it's when something like this, to drink, because I couldn't get it down fast enough. To drink from the well of blessing. You must understand that it comes by serving God and man. So I don't have a problem serving God. You see what I'm saying? Or I think I don't. But I do if I don't serve man. And I think I do not. It's as though the servant's heart is the cup that holds the blessing. And without the cup, the right attitude, the right heart, the blessing flows right through your hands. And you don't see it. If any of you have been on mission trips, if you've been on a mission trip, you go to serve. That's what you go for. You go to serve. And I'm not really, I don't think I've met a person, maybe, maybe out there. I don't think that I've, Dean, I don't think I've met a person out there that went on a mission trip to serve that hasn't come back and said, I was the one served because I've been richly blessed. Can I have an amen? It's pretty amazing. It, it's just how it works because it's designed by God to work that way. Now keep in mind, because this is important, Keep in mind, because you are called to serve man, it does not mean you approve of their sin. There's the difference. One must remember that as a Christian. I can serve someone that is in a sinful lifestyle, but it does not mean I or God is in approval of their sin. But I must remember that is precisely why he sent his son to die on the cross for their sins as well as my sins. What it should display is the love that I have for the God I serve. Because he said, when you do it, do it as though you're doing it for me. And I'll take care of the rest. Zach got to this last meal in his communion part today. I love that. It's in John 13. You can read it for yourself, of course. You know the story well. Jesus' last meal with his disciples was very important. It was an important message for them, but I want to tell you today that it's an important message for anybody that reads it and calls himself Christian. Please understand that. 
He could have just taken the time just to relax and enjoy himself, knowing that he was about to go to the cross. But not our Jesus. He was once again going to teach them an importance, the importance of what he had been telling them all along. He did not change anything of his story to them, even up to the point of his death. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's a pretty amazing story that unfolds there. So what was he teaching them? You can read the scripture there, but I want to just say it this way. And that was, you say you love me, then let me show you how to prove that. You say you want to receive blessings from me in your life, then let me show you where that starts. You say you want to be like me and you want to follow me in my ways, then let me show you how that can be done in your life. And so the master, the master, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the heaven maker, the water walker, the dead man raiser, the one that was only the one that was capable of going to the pits of hell and blowing its doors off for you and for me, rose up from the table, slips on his apron, and washes the feet of those that thought that they were servants. The master servant at work once again was giving you and I a visual of what is most Christ-like. Serving. That's a true servant. And at the bottom of the well you will find the sweet water of blessings that you have been searching for your whole life. Serving is where you find the well of blessings. Because there is where you find my Jesus. You know, I love stories, love to. Brett sends me a lot of good stories, appreciate him so much. Uh, but here's one of this, this, this from long ago. It's from a pastor, Pastor Gordon. He said one day he was, there was a young boy walking by his church from the sanctuary, carrying a rusty cage with several field birds inside, fluttering nervously, of course. Gordon required, son, where'd you get those birds at? Oh, I got them out there in the field. I captured them myself. Well, what you going to do with those birds, he said. Well, he said, I don't know. He said, I'm just going to probably just play around with them a while, watch them for a while. And then he said, I was just thinking about taking them home and feeding them to my cat. Oh, really, Gordon said. He said, son, I'll tell you what. Let me, let me buy those from you. Oh, you don't want all these old field birds, he said. They're not worth anything. Well, they can't even sing good. You don't want these. He said, I'll tell you what, son, I'll give you $2 for that cage and those birds. Boy, he said, hey, you got it, sir. He went on his way just whistling and happy as he could be. Gordon said he walked around the back side of his church and simply opened the old rusty cage, and there those little birds flew out toward the heavens. The next Sunday, he took that cage into the pulpit. As, a, as if you will, a sample of the illustrate, the sermon, the sermon about Jesus Christ. That Jesus came, sought to seek and to save and to serve the lost, you and I. Paying for them with his own blood, his precious blood. He simply told his congregation, he said, that boy told me that these birds were not songsters. I guess that's a word. Debbie would know. These birds were not songsters. And Gordon said, but you know, when I released them, when I released them, and as they flew heavenward, it seemed to me as they were singing, redeemed, redeemed, redeemed. And that is what we are. We are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. We are redeemed because of what Jesus did where he came and served us all the way to the cross. To not wash our feet. To not just cleanse us for a moment. But to cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
before, during, and after we experience Him as our Lord and Savior. So that you and I could be covered by that blood so that one day when we stand before God, we stand redeemed because of that blood. We are redeemed. You see, He left the heavens. He left the heavens and put on the apron for you and for me. He came to serve and wash us clean by the precious blood of the Lamb. Blessed Blessed, blessed, I think so. How about you? You know, would you like to drink from that well? It's just a question for you. Would you like to drink from that well? That's what he's offering today. It's so beautiful. God is so he knows all things, of course, but he, know, he knew this moment was right here for you. And he's asking somebody today, I just know it. Would you like to drink from the well today? It's always available. It's always free. You see, my friend, God only wants good for you. Once you understand that, that God only wants good for you, and what's good for you starts with Jesus. Come to the well. Take a drink. And see for yourself. Let's pray. Father, what an awesome God you are. We praise your holy name. We praise you for what you've done. You could have said in the beginning when the sin came into this world, you could have said, that's it, I'm done, I'm not doing this. But you didn't. You knew then that the plan was and the only way that we could be redeemed and right with you was, was going to be the one that was with you all along. And Jesus knew that as well. And yet history went by and we read all those 66 books that was mentioned and in all of those things, you were still there, but it was leading up to one event. Jesus on the cross. And through all that history, Jesus waited patiently to be born of a virgin. To walk among people that hated him. Despised him. Knowing all the while that the men that he picked handpicked to serve, we're going to turn and walk away. And he knew what it was going to cost. It was going to cost him you turning his back on him so that that debt could be paid for me. We praise you, Father, for the blessing of Jesus. I praise you for the blessing of his precious blood. I would long to be more like him in my life, Father. Help me to live long enough to be more like him. For someday, we'll meet face to face. And all the pieces that I've missed in life and all the failures that I've had, I know that he's going to say, welcome home. Because I accepted what he served up to me which was his blood. Bathe us in it today, Father. Forgive us. Make me a servant to be more like you. In the power of Jesus' name, let it be so. Amen and amen. Make me a servant. Come if you may, as we stand and sing. Make me a servant, Lord, make me like you. For you are a servant, make me one too. Make me a servant, do what you must do to make.